We're finally getting the hang of high consequence timber framing. Got the seventh post, the seventh beam stood. You're in seventh heaven. We're in seventh heaven, baby. <laughs> but there have been some pretty big ups and downs this week. I've just got to apologize. Today has just been um, a roller coaster of emotions. The light at the end of the tunnel is getting brighter. That'll be a Five Guys Friday if I've ever seen one. <laughs> hey, I like the way you're thinking. We just need to stay positive and trust the process. We should be done with this by Christmas for sure. That is not the timeline we're looking for, <laughs> Trent. <laughs> All right, we got two posts left. <clears throat> this post and the one that's getting delivered later today. I'm pretty sure last time I talked to them and said they're gonna deliver in the afternoon, which usually means right when it's quitting time. So we're gonna get this one cut. Uh, it's a little bit not very flat on the bottom. So we're gonna cut it, make it flat, put a knife plate in it, cut our Forstner bits, check our uh, height with the laser, the transit, and then we'll get this one cut to the proper height, get our beam pocket cut in it, and then Hopefully we'll be able to get our beam that goes from that post to this post. I'm not sure how long that's gonna take. Maybe that'll be all we do today. Hopefully not, because it should go pretty quick. Kind of really just depends on when BMC gets here with all of our material on what's gonna happen today. Oh, I'm starting to think at this point, Brandon was right, but like a month off and it's gonna be <laughs> July 19th instead of June 19th. <laughs> Might have the deck done by then. Yeah, seriously. They were just waiting for you to finish building, Trent. I'd be proud of him. <laughs> Level is that pretty beer? good? Yeah, yeah, better than any of the other ones. Good, good. That looks good. No, uh, it's okay. <coughs> Bless you. I'll say it's good. I'm just gonna try to shave a little bit off this bottom because it's kind of wobbly, not the squarest. Okay, you happy with that beaver cutter? This? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's doing a pretty good job. Good morning. How's it going? No forklift. Huh? No forklift. No forklift. <laughs> Interesting. That's funny. Uh, what would you like? You can just dump it right there. We'll handle it. Some of the 2x6 gonna pull forward? pleasant surprise. We expected BMC to drop off our lumber at the end of the day and it's 11 o'clock. So we've got our last timber over there that needs to be cut down for our final post at the end, wow. which means as soon as we get the beam pocket cut in this thing and get it stood, we can start working on that uh, pillar. Then we just got to do the two beams between them and all of the pillars and beams, except for the hip beams, will be done. That was your goal before the baby comes. We've got a lot of goals. Okay. <laughs> we could probably do that now today. Now I'm hoping we get the roof on before the baby goes. No! I just scheduled acupuncture. Right. I'm done, dude. 
<laughs> yeah. I scheduled acupuncture for tomorrow. We have my doula coming over tonight to help um, do some rebozo and spinning babies work. The baby's head down but posterior, which means he's facing this way instead of facing this way, which is not bad. Uh, it just will make labor harder and longer and more painful. Um, so it's not great for me. And he's not engaged anymore. He, he seemed to be last week, but now he's up a little bit higher. So working on positioning. <sighs> Maybe I'll schedule a prenatal massage if that doesn't work. Starting to try all the things. <laughs> One thing I like about all these options is they won't really work unless my body is ready. So they're pretty low pressure um, and low risk for the baby. So we're just doing some natural kind of gentle uh, persuasive induction techniques that if the baby wants to come, will help make him come. <laughs> hey, did you change your clothes? What are you wearing now? Uh, your Christmas and, clothes. And your Christmas shirt. Right. Is it Christmas time? Right. What? No. 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 <laughs> Are you Santa Claus? Right. What does Santa Claus say? Ho ho ho! You <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Merry Christmas in July. <laughs> Hanging up on that freaking oh. corner. Are you sleeping? Where's Leo? Yeah, I gotta sleep. Oh. You gotta sleep? <laughs> okay, good night. Uh oh. <laughs> Working in a barn with all these shavings. I know. <laughs> all right, we got our second to last post cut. The knife plate is installed, or the, the holes in the slot are installed. The beam pocket is cut, came out beautiful, it's perfect. Uh, we got our bolts in the top, we got straps through it. We're literally ready to set it. Brandon is just finishing hammer drilling the holes in the pier, then we can epoxy those bolts in. That epoxy takes 80 minutes to fully cure, then we can set this post, but I think we got to get this post out of the way so we can get the other post up here and start getting it cut and ready. Sweet. It is 11.45, so we're making great time. our final post yeah this is the final post last post it's the final countdown So tight. Nice. It feels like it doesn't fit and it just needs like a little bit of pressure. Excellent. Yeah, scrape marks all the way down. Oh my goodness. Okay. Whew. Oh man. Okay. It's warm today. But that's fine. We got our lumber delivery and they forgot the brackets that they had. Are there flies in here too? The flies are insane. The brackets have been forgotten back at BMC. 
I don't know if we'll actually get to using them today, but it would be nice to have them all up here. And while I'm not super useful on the job site right now, I'm gonna go run a quick errand, head over there, pick up those brackets, maybe a nice little treat for the guys while I'm out because it's so hot and they are just grinding away in the hot sun out there. <sighs> so out of breath. Let's do this. It's the fire in the rain. smile within the pain It's the logic but insane You cannot know from where it came It's the way you cross the floor Before you head on out the door I've been debating sharing more about this, but I feel like it's just so consuming the last day or two that it's important to talk about and probably other people have gone through it too so maybe relatable um, and helpful for some people to hear we have had a pretty normal pregnancy um, especially compared to Leo so I've been like pretty upbeat and positive about the way things have been going um, but now He's been in a weird position for a while, transverse, which is horizontal. Uh, we finally got him head down. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't really love being pregnant. I've definitely talked about this before. You can feel these conflicting emotions where you, I don't know, hate is a strong word, but I mean, I have severe heartburn, sciatic pain, lower back pain, um, in pregnancy insomnia, um, brain fog, just like so many symptoms that are pretty normal for pregnancy that are nausea, that are just like very um, exacerbated, I, th I think, or I don't know, I just feel them very tenderly. And um, at the same time, I'm so excited about the fact that we're pregnant and that we have a baby coming and I wanted to be pregnant. We were trying to get pregnant. So it's this weird dichotomy of emotions um, that really ends up with the pregnant person feeling a lot of guilt, I think. And I've just been dealing with so much guilt about how much I don't wanna be pregnant and how much I know he needs to cook for as long as possible. But at the same time, I've been fully expecting to give birth before my due date because Leo came at 36 weeks. And I was like, okay, that's the precedent. We're going off of that timeline. Maybe this baby will come around 37 or 38 weeks. That's what I had in my head. And now my due date is in two days. I will be 40 weeks pregnant. And I love, I love the fact that we are having a healthy baby. I cannot reiterate that enough. But I am so done <laughs> being pregnant. I am so over it. I cannot sleep. And my back and my hips hurt so badly. I cannot get comfortable. I can't eat without feeling nauseous. I can't drink water without getting heartburn. I am so done. <laughs> and I just feel like that is something important to share because um, I know other women can relate to that and it's okay to feel done and also to feel grateful. You can feel them both at the same time. Um, unfortunately, we, um, we had a scan last week to check on his position just to confirm where things were and they did kind of like a growth scan in the process to check on his fluids and blood flow and his amniotic fluid levels look great, his blood flow and his umbilical cord looks great but he's measuring small and not just like a little small. He's measuring 20 days smaller than his gestational age, which is a little bit um, concerned, which is very concerning. <laughs> We're very concerned. And um, my birth team has been saying, you know, just let him keep cooking. You're probably gonna go past your due date, but that's important for him to grow and be a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger which I 100% agree with. 
even though I really don't want to be pregnant anymore. <laughs> so today has just been um, a roller coaster of emotions, trying to be patient and be grateful and know that this is not going to last forever, even though it does feel like I'm going to be pregnant forever. But I know that that's a very common feeling for a lot of pregnant women, and I want to validate those feelings. And you are superheroes, any of you pregnant women out there. So one day I won't be pregnant anymore, and when that day comes, hopefully we'll have a really healthy, happy baby. And in the meantime, I'm using this drive to reset and reorient and remember how lucky, how unbelievably lucky we are to be in this position in the first place. Um, and I don't take any of that for granted. Now let's go pick up some brackets. <laughs> I don't know where I should begin. Oh, all right. I've just got to apologize to everybody that has been watching us do a million different peers, and they look exactly the same to you guys, I know, and I'm very sorry because I know it's probably just as boring as watching drywall when you watch us like do the knife plates on these piers. It took us forever to drill the knife plates, even though you know a machine shop could have done it really quickly. We, we didn't go that route. We did it ourselves, which I'm really proud that we did it ourselves because this is a pretty monumental structure that we're building here. So I actually got a comment in a recent video when we first started working with these big timbers and these posts and doing the knife plates and all that stuff. And the comment makes me feel actually really good. Um, it was very, very simple. And the comment just said, big timbers are not for beginners. And that could not be closer to the truth. Uh, big timbers are really intimidating they're intense they're expensive it's difficult there's a lot of finesse that goes into it but look at what we did we're basically done i have cut the beam pocket and the knife plate in the seventh and the eighth timber this is our last two posts that we have to stand they're both completely drilled knife plates are ready all i got to do is set them on the knife plates and then put our upper beams in which is actually the easy part and we are beginners. This is our first time ever timber framing. We're trying very hard to make sure everything is correct and right and square and level and plumb. And to be honest, this is one of the best projects or at least the turnout of this project is probably the best out of anything we've ever done. So whoever left that comment that said big timbers are not for beginners, thank you because it gave me the confidence knowing that we've done a really good job here on our first try and just because they're not for beginners doesn't mean you can't do it if you are a beginner so i'm uh, about to fire up the excavator pick up our seventh pillar go set it on the knife plate and then we'll do number eight and uh hopefully Allie will be back soon with some brackets maybe we can get some other beams put up today's been a good day i've been running Off some brackets. I was hoping to pick those up. Okay, let's pull the order up. Okay. I'm the one that did the order. Oh, great. So okay, perfect. they probably forgot to grab the brackets. Yes, okay. Okay. This one's not too heavy, okay. so I'll give you this one. Okay, I can just grab a cart too. If there's more. Yeah, if you want to do that. Okay. I'll count to ten, then open up my eyes. If you're gone, I'll take it as a sign. Got done picking up about 40 of these things. Oh, really? 
<laughs> I'm sorry to make you do no, it no, one more fine. time. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much. I no appreciate problem. it. Thanks. Thank you. Easy. Locked and loaded. Got some brackets. <sighs> Let's get back to work. have been busy yeah well we got our seventh post stood we got our uh is that the seventh beam i think it's the seventh beam wow. too one two three four five six yeah got the seventh post the seventh beam stood you're in seventh heaven we're in seventh heaven baby <laughs> we want to be in eighth heaven so <laughs> we're working to get towards that it is 2 30 so we got a little ways uh, we just got to pull this post, which is already completely cut and ready. Cool. Stick it on that knife plate, get our beam cut, shove it in there, drill some auger holes, put some bolts in. Wow. And that'll be a Five Guys Friday if I've ever seen one. <laughs> hey, I like the way you're thinking. <laughs> How'd the bracket picking up go? It went really well. They said uh, your beam that you ordered will also be delivered on Monday. Cool. Yeah. That's where the cold Oh. V10 climber right there. Timber climber. Timber climbing. It's a whole new Olympic sport. Baby, you, you rock my world. Baby, you, you rock my It's a good voice you've got. Thanks. I've got range coming out my ears. <laughs> home, home on the range. <laughs> Where the buffalo roam, or something like that. It's the deer and the antelope. <laughs> deer and the antelope, <laughs> buffalo, whatever. <laughs> I feel like my grandpa used to say buffalo. <laughs> That's how you rock it, baby. Perfectly level, straight. Yeah, where the level is. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Besides the fact that my brain's fried, we're really making headway here. I don't know if we have time for this, do we? <laughs> yeah. Then someone's gonna drop you off at home because I have an appointment with Robin. Get this baby out of me. <laughs> Allie's not having a good time, guys, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> Morale is low. Look, hummingbird, it's trying to eat out of your fake Christmas See, he likes my Christmas spirit. Yeah, no, he's like, what is this fake <laughs> berries up here? I need real berries and starving. <laughs> hang it on one of these. Yeah, now we'll be able to hang stuff. Cool. <sighs> you deserve that. <laughs> You're so rude. <laughs> All the one for me. Last post and uh she ain't level, or plumb, or square. She ugly. It was like one of the best beam pockets I've ever cut. It was <laughs> such a beautiful beam pocket. And the plate sat so nice and flat on the bottom. Something with the pier. I think we, when we tested where the plate was gonna go on the pier, yeah. it, had, it was like a little bit out of level. So we like made the cut a little bit off so uh, that it would sit flat. Yeah. And then I think in order to make the pier in line with the other two piers, we had to scoot it. Yeah. And I think we scooted it and it changed the level of oh the, the base plate. So we might have to start over. Manana. No, right now. I am very excited about the fact that we do have a hot tub planned to go right here in the corner of the deck. It will be covered so we can use it all winter long. We'll never have to shovel snow off of it. We knew that we needed it to be covered with how much snow we get up here. And this is going to be the perfect spot. We'll reinforce the bottom so it's not just hanging on the deck. I'm so excited. This roof and deck configuration 
is gonna be amazing when it's done. Whoa! Oh! Let off! A little more! Two more! Alright! Perfect! You're such a jokester! Why? There's no starting over. You fixed it! See that far or the, the left corner over there? That little gap under the corner there. Not the end of the world, but it's not good for a couple reasons. One, you don't want there to be a gap there because over time all the snow and weight and time and everything is going to compress all of this and the spot that is touching is going to end up smushing out like some peanut butter and then that side will end up touching in the future one day and that will lower the height of the roof that much and the whole house could fall down. That will be Leo's problem. Yes, but it could be our problem in like two years. Also, especially with how close this pier is to the ground, when there's snow and water and ice and runoff, when moisture or water gets underneath there and it freezes, it'll lift it. Also, water will get under there and it'll soak up into the timber. Just, my life is a disaster. <laughs> but there's about three piers at least, or three posts that look like that, so. At least this post isn't alone. Can you fill the gap with concrete or something? Can you fill it with like a epoxy? I don't know. S syringe you something. Caulk it caulk if you caulk it. Want it. Yeah, a lot of caulk. Yeah. It's fine. We're gonna in true Trent and Alley fashion. We're gonna go with it. We're gonna wing it, and it'll probably be fine. Stick out one little finger. Hi. I see you. I'm sleeping. You're sleeping. Okay, good night. I'm the cow. Okay. Did you guys go for a walk? Yeah, he didn't go to sleep. So oh. it, was like, it was like 20 minutes up there and he was messing around. So nice. I'm like, let's go for a walk. And he's like, I don't want to. I'm like, we're going to go for a walk. <laughs> so he fell asleep in the store. Perfect. Yeah. Woohoo! Yes. So excited. Your strap is gonna get smushed. I know. Right? Okay. Aren't you hot? No, I'm in my hot bag. Okay. So. That hoodie is too small for you. No. <laughs> no? Okay. Do you see what Dada's doing? Yeah. That's what they have up there. Whoa. Gosh, Trent, be careful. What are you doing? Woo! No, I mean, it looks like the same beam. Yeah. Oh, like the colors matched up pretty, pretty good. Yeah. All right, we have finally done it. There's some holes we have to drill and some bolts that we have to put in, but the heavy lifting, no pun intended, is done. We got all of the posts lifted, set, leveled, everything. We got all of the beams set, fully installed. All we have to do now is, you know, drill a couple holes and throw some bolts through them to get this last beam secured permanently. And then we have some floor beams and a couple of hip beams. And after that, it's just trusses and roof sheathing. We should be done with this by Christmas for sure. <laughs> that is not the timeline we're looking for, Trent. <laughs> But you didn't think that we'd be able to get this done. This was this was your goal before baby comes, to do all the, the posts and the beams. Yeah, I just didn't want to have like a couple of posts stood up out here and then 
have to like leave for three weeks and take care of the baby and like just have them be up here susceptible to crazy wind storms and whatever else. I'm actually not very stoked right now about them sitting out here with the tops of these timbers open because if it rains, moisture gets down inside the timbers and, and that's bad, so. There's no baby yet, so. We got know? time. We got time. We got time, <laughs> baby. All right, so like Ali just said, we have some time. We basically, uh, Probably need another week, I would say, and we'll probably have some trusses going up. And, or not trusses, I keep, rafters, I keep calling them trusses, they're rafters. Once we get our rafters up, which could happen next week, we gotta take out the windows, put up our ledger board, but now we have the sheathing and the two by sixes and everything that's needed to do that. We can order our new windows. I'm really, really pleased with all we got done today or this week or just in general. Look what we built, man. This is cool. You guys are the dream team over here. Making big moves. Say something, Grayson. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think uh, this is probably where we're gonna let you guys go. So if you guys enjoyed coming along on today's adventure, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. Es cada vez más fuerte. Yo pensaba que esto del amor ya se me había pasado y que no era para mí nunca más. Pero el amor llega así de esa